Hey everyone, I'm Mao, and welcome to the Game Design Perspective. So, with the upcoming release of Sonic Cross Shadow Generations, I've been playing a lot of Sonic games lately. In preparation for what Sonic Generations actually is, I played it back when it released and I haven't really touched it ever since. I'm also very hyped for the third movie, so I got back into playing one of the games that people actually disliked a lot when it came out. I think in 2013, and that is Sonic Lost World. And Sonic Lost World is a cool game. I really like it. It's a very solid game and one of the most polished and focused Sonic experiences ever. And this video is not rant about how it feels slow and lacks momentum. I'm also not saying that the reviews that state that aren't true. They are, they are completely right. Like if you see a review of Sonic Lost World, they'll most probably talk about how it feels slower than previous Sonic games, and they are totally right. What this video is about is, first we're gonna be talking about what the game wanted to achieve, what the game does really well, and how the game should have focused those great aspects to make the game even better. It's clear to me the team wanted to make a game that pulled in a lot of newcomers and casual players into the Sonic IP. And Sega planned a strategy to do so. First, they released Sonic Dash, which is arguably Sonic's most popular game ever. I mean, it has over 500 million downloads. Like, it's nuts. It's incredible what they did with Sonic Dash. It's arguably Sonic's most popular entry ever with over 500 million downloads by 2020. It's incredible! I don't know if there is any other Sonic game that is as popular as this one is. Of course Sega wanted to capitalize on that. I remember so many people had it downloaded on their phones back then. Also, so many parents that downloaded it so their children could play on their phones. Oh my god, I remember those days. So after some rough patches, they got Sonic back into the mainstream and casual audience. The next step was to deliver a casual and friendly Sonic game to cash in some money with the new audience. The first problem is that Sega targeted the Wii U. We know what happened with the Wii U. And it's not only the fact that the Wii U sold very poorly, it was released on the first year that the Wii U was out, or after the first year. Of course, there was a very small install base out there for the Wii U. So, unsurprisingly, the game sold very bad. Sales were not good. But what they wanted to achieve with the game was actually very interesting. It's obvious that they turned their heads into the Super Mario Galaxy games to make Sonic a friendlier platformer game. So the game feels like a merge between both of them. And one of the main things that the team wanted to achieve with this game was accessibility. Sonic games are hard because they want players to react really fast. And this game addresses that in what may be a controversial way for a lot of people. But I want you to keep the accessibility thing in mind because it's gonna be very important later in down in the video. Now, what does the game do really well? Well, Sonic has never had a more solid and focused character controller. Since the game is not about momentum, the platforming controls are very tight, responsive, and feel incredible. Every action Sonic can perform feels precise and to the point. Everything in Sonic's character controller feels extremely polished. The animations have a very cartoony approach that make the game feel extremely rich. But of course, it sacrifices one of Sonic's key aspects. The momentum. For better or for worse, you decide, you tell me. But they dissected Sonic's identity to make a Sonic game that provided a sense of flow, not by speed, but by chaining different moves in a quickly manner. The game feels as if Mario had to chain Sonic's verbs and actions throughout the level, which in and on itself is not a bad thing by any means. The reason people hate this approach is because part of Sonic's nature is the momentum, is that sense of speed. This is actually a very fast platformer. If you play it, you're gonna see that it is a fast platformer, it is, it is a fast game, very fast paced. It's just not to the, to the standard Sonic games usually wear, not that the game wanted to be, and that's a very important point in this. Then, after the game design, after the character controller, comes the level design. 
And the level design is actually very solid and very calculated. What does this mean on a 3D platformer? Well, linear levels in games tend to propose a very specific pacing and flow of events and actions throughout the course of a level or mission. The more closed and more linear they are, the stronger this becomes. And this is not a bad thing at all. Some games require that, while some others require open spaces to be enjoyable. And there are merits on both. Racing games usually have linear paths opposite to open world games. For example, The Legend of Zelda, it being an open air game, has different level necessities than, for example, an Uncharted game, which are very linear games. They both have different requirements and they are very hard to make on their own ways. It's not that one is easier than the other, it's just that they have different requirements that they need to meet. But it is true that by having linear levels, the experience throughout the game tends to be more controlled. And Sonic games have always been like that. Like, Sonic stands in the midpoint between a racing game and a Mario game. Sonic has always controlled like Mario mixed up with a car. <laughs> the way Sonic turns, and even in some games, Sonic has a drift mechanic. Sonic is like a car that can jump. Hence why Sonic games tend to have very linear levels. It's just that the approach of those linear levels in this game feel more like Super Mario Galaxy's levels with Sonic's pacing and verbs added to them. Sonic is about running, so they need to give you like a space that you, where you can run. Hence why the levels are so linear and in many ways they are like hallways in this game, which is not a bad thing by any means. The game wants to make it up by the pacing of the challenges and by chaining different moves and adding this sense of flow into this cartoony and very solid platformer. which was somewhat what Sonic the Hedgehog wanted to achieve when it started as somewhat like a Super Mario game for speedrunners. And in general the game looks very solid and timeless, the art style looks like it. Though yeah, it does look like a generic Sonic game, like I'm not gonna try to defend that. Green Hill Zone looks like Green Hill, and the Desert and Snow Zones look the part, and it feels generic for a Sonic game. By this point, either Sonic games look like every game has a Green Hill Zone or similar, like a city or a science fiction space vessel and the colon. Though Green Hill Zone is a little too much by this point. And I see a lot of people complain that the levels feel somewhat black. I think part of it is because of this art direction. I'm also not going to say every level design feels extremely unique with its own gimmick and mechanical as Super Mario. But art does matter and gives a lot of feel to the game. So my guess on why they went for this art style are two points. And this is not defending the game, I'm just trying to give an explanation on why they went for this approach. First, they were able to reduce the budget by a ton. By reusing this art style, iteration was much faster. And you can definitely see where the gray box lies, right? It's a very blocky art style that requires very little amount of, of set dress. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Again, like Super Mario has done this a lot of times, right? It's part of that classic Super Mario look. Super Mario 3D World, Super Mario 3D Land, the new Super Mario Bros games have all this art style that is very classic and timeless. And the second one is that, again, remember this was an introduction for for Sonic Dash players. They really wanted to reestablish this classic Sonic look and feel and make it more recognizable to people, similar to what Mario was doing. And story-wise, it's, it's fine. At least I find it that way. Not every game needs a very profound story. A lot of platformers understand that and go for a story that just justifies the gameplay. Which is what happens here. Also, not every Sonic games need to be as complex as Shadow's story. <laughs> and I'm good with that. Uh, that's fine. That's fine for me, honestly. So back to the gameplay aspect. Let's talk about the pros and cons for the game. For the cons, I would say that there's a lot of player expression that is lost. Not necessarily in the level design aspect, because linearity is nothing new to Sonic, but in the loss of momentum 
momentum. This is where I think the game fails for a lot of people. But Sonic has a lot of player expression. Although Sonic's moveset tends to be very small and focused, momentum is where players are rewarded. Maintaining momentum is hard, and obtaining it requires a lot of effort. And you can do a lot of with momentum. Sonic Adventure allows you to do so much with it, like reaching secret areas or skipping entire level bits with it. And it's fun because it's freeing and rewarding. That is my main con for the game, honestly. And it's a huge con, not gonna lie. But what are the pros for all of this? Well, the pros are that everything in the game feels very intentional. Every challenge, every jump, every speed boost, it all feels planned. Which again, can be a bad thing depending on how you see it since it also lacks player expression. But why I feel it's a pro for this game is that designers are able to control the flow and pace of this game really well and makes it easier for players to achieve a state of flow. The levels are fast paced, you're moving into different beats quick. And by fast paced, I'm not talking about Sonic's running speed or momentum. I'm talking about how long each part of the level lasts. And they tend to be fast, really fast. And all of this, like how the designers are able to control the flow of the game, the pacing, how they are able to pretty much control the fun, makes it very accessible to new players. Because the skill ceiling is not as high to have fun. The boost games are too fast for a lot of players out there and actually require like a lot of skill to be enjoyable for many of them. Require a lot of practice to each level to react how they want you to react. They can also cause motion sickness. And this game, Sonic Lost World, will hardly be like that with many of its design choices, such as the static camera. You cannot control the camera in this game. It is a very accessible game, which is not easy to do. It has to be designed in the core of the game. It has to come from the very beginning, because it has to do with everything that it involves. The game design, the level design, the art style, like everything. Everything needs to be there to cooperate for the game to be accessible to new players, to newcomers, so, for, so that it is easy and fun. And this game knew it started a good audience. They knew who they wanted to target with this game. It also feels a lot like a, this Saturday morning cartoon. I've seen a lot of people talk about that, and it's true. It feels like that. That's what they wanted to achieve, this very accessible and very cartoony and fun game. And it all points in that direction. It feels like the Genesis Sonic games in 3D, which is something that I don't feel any other Sonic game actually has. Sonic is very expressive in this game. It's very, very expressive. Its animations are very expressive. The enemies are as well. It has this very simple story. It's very simple gameplay. It has this Sonic identity. It's just dissected for a new target audience. Now, where I feel they should have focused a lot of these great aspects the game has, it would be in a change of pacing throughout the game. Not the level, not each individual level, but the game. And I think this should have been done by mixing linear levels and open levels. I'm not saying they should not have made these linear levels because I actually enjoy them a lot, but I would love to see more levels like the, the Legend of Zelda zone. Yes, we have that zone and it's open, but it's extremely small. It's my favorite level in the game, unsurprisingly, if you guys have seen the channel, but I think it is a very interesting one where you can see like how much of Sonic would work in that kind of level and the character controller actually feels like it could work in a level design approach similar to the diorama level design in Super Mario 64 or Sunshine. There are even climbing mechanics that feel like they belong in a level like that. Of course, they would have to make a new camera for this if they were to explore that side of the level design. The camera is not terrible in The Legend of Zelda Zone, but they would have to make a more robust system if they were to lean into that direction. But besides that, Sonic's speed feels great for that sort of level. He feels fast, but not too fast to break the metrics in a level like that. Usually games that 
focus a lot on momentum need to have open spaces so that they actually work and don't break the level or the metrics. That's why Sonic Frontiers leaned in that direction of being an open space. It's not like a Super Mario 64 diorama. It's more like a an open space where you can play with Sonic's momentum and it's very fun. But I feel this game would benefit a lot with that, that diorama level design style. Also, the jumps feels more blocky platform, right? Like it feels more like a Mario platformer game. The wall run and wall jumps could work great in such environments. And there's this me climbing mechanic too. It just feels like a missed opportunity for me. At some point, I even thought that the open level approach should have been the only level approach for this game. But then I thought like, no, I do enjoy those linear levels. Those linear levels are very well made. I just think the game would greatly benefit in having this change of pace, right? Because people are already finding this game to be slow. They feel it's slow. It's not slow. It's just way slower than this than what Sonic games usually are, but it does feel faster than a Super Mario game, which is not played by a speedrunner or someone that likes a speedrun, which is played by a casual player. So if you compare the casual Sonic Lost World playthrough and the casual Super Mario playthrough, like you'll see that it is a fast platform. But this change of pace would have been really good. These open levels could have worked wonders for that game. And maybe, maybe would have sparked a new branch of Sonic gameplay games. But that's just my opinion. I want you guys to comment. What do you, how do you feel about that? About what I said? Now, the moment of truth, where I think that even Sonic Team and Sega didn't understand this game, where I think they misunderstood this game, is that they, yes, they knew their target audience perfectly, but maybe that was just the wrong target audience? I don't think they should have aimed this game into that target audience. Casual players and mobile players tend to like casual and mobile games. Not every player will go out there and buy a console just to play the new Sonic game, right? Like, the target audience to me was where they went wrong with it. And then they also thought the Wii U was gonna be as successful as the Wii, right? Like, like the Wii U released on 2012, this game was released on 2013. So, of course, they thought, like, this is gonna be a huge success. The Wii U is gonna be a huge success after the Wii. Let's just release the game there and absorb a lot of this casual audience that that Sonic Dash is actually bringing into the Sonic IP. Everything points in that direction, it's just that maybe that wasn't the direction they should have gone for. The game is not bad by any means, it's just targeted wrong. It was just sent out there to die and they misunderstood who Sonic audience actually is. And who Sonic audience actually is? Well, Sonic pretty much created a target audience. Sonic literally created the fast-paced, momentum-driven platformer games. That's the target audience. It has a huge target audience. That's why we're seeing a boom of games that are similar to that and have their own approach into what they think a Sonic game could be. We have Spark the Electric Gesture. We have Freedom Planet. There are so many games inspired by Sonic, which target that same audience. I worked on Rakugaki. Rakugaki targets that same audience. I'm not gonna say it's like a Sonic clone. It's not a Sonic clone, but it targets that audience. And you can see where the, where the speedrun community lies on that. A lot of Sonic speedrunners got into Rakugaki. That's where it lies. That's the target audience Sonic should be targeting for. Not not the casual audience. Like you can get the casual audience through smartphone games, yeah, but that doesn't mean you can you can migrate that target audience into a console target. And what they are doing with the Sonic movies is actually the great approach. Actually the greatest approach they can take to introduce newcomers into the IP. Especially with the third movie. What they're doing with the third movie is brilliant because they're bringing Sonic generations arguably the best title they could use to bring new players right it, since it m tries to merge as much of sonic as they can and also introducing shadow generations it's literally the perfect title for newcomers into the ip sega finally solved it it wasn't sonic lost world this was the real the real deal so yeah guys thank you so much for watching please let me know what you guys think about what i said in the video please let me know if you agree with me if you don't agree with me if you hate this game you're, you wouldn't be wrong by hating it. If you like this game as much as I do, I enjoy the platforming aspect, 
respect very much. If you agree with my comments, if you agree with my opinions, please let me know, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. See you guys.